This lesson is on unit conversion. We will cover American to American conversions, things you already know, metric to metric, metric to American conversions, and memorize the values 25.4 and some more. Unit conversion basic math technique. Distance, volume, mass, temperature, pressure, electrical are some of the variables we'll work with, as well as speed and feed, threads, bolts and nuts, textile yarn size, and injection molding variables. So let's look at American to American conversions. You'll find these in a table. One mile equal 5,280 feet. One yard equal three feet. One foot equal 12 inches. And one eighth of an inch equals 0 0.125 inches. That's also referred sometimes as 125 thousandths as 0 0.001 is one thousandths of an inch, sometimes referred to as one thou. And a tenth is a ten thousandth of an inch, which is 0 0.0001. Okay, we also have the U.S. short ton is 2,000 pounds, and one pound equals 16 ounces. Now let's look at metric. And we really should be using metric, or at least we should be using the same system that our customers are using or the other engineers that we're working with. And in the metric system, there are base units of meter, gram, liter, and pascal. And the one meter equals 10 decimeters. It e equals 100 centimeters. It equals 1,000 millimeters. So there's a pattern of the word deci is 10, centi is 100, milli is 1,000. So, for example, if we wanted to convert 0.65 meters to millimeters, all we have to do is move the decimal place to the right three places. So 0.65, move the decimal place to the right three places, and we have 650 millimeters. Now, if we had a kilometer, that's 1,000 meters. So if we look at uh, 768 meters, how many kilometers is that? We'll move the decimal place to the left three places, and that's 0.768 kilometers. One kilogram equals 1,000 grams, and one kiloliter equals 1,000 liters, and a megapascal is one million pascals. Notice also that you can convert easily cubic millimeters to cubic centimeters by moving the decimal place three places, or square millimeters to square centimeters by moving the decimal place two places, or from millimeters to centimeters by moving the decimal place one place. So these are easy conversions that you can do with metric. Now let's look at converting American to metric our first thing is to convert millimeters to inches. So there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch. There's also 453 grams in one pound. These are a couple of values that you should memorize, especially 25.4. So let's look at our math conversion technique and with an example of converting 0 0.125 inches to millimeters. With this technique, the first thing we do is write down the unit of, uh, that we start with, that we know. So we start out here with 0.125 inches. And we have to be sure to write the unit of measure. Don't forget that, that's very important in this technique. Write down 0 0.125 inches. Now we're going to multiply that by a ratio and the value for that ratio comes from our table of conversions. So we see 25.4 millimeters is equal to one inch. Now we put the one inch on the bottom because we need the inches to go away by canceling out and we'll be left with millimeters. So the inches goes on the bottom and the 25.4 millimeters goes on the top. Then we can cancel out the inches on the top with the inches on the bottom, 
and we'll just do basic multi basic multiplication. So 0 0.125 times 25.4 equals 3.175, and the units are left over millimeters transfers to the other side. So let's look at another conversion that's a little bit more complex. Convert 1.25 feet per second to meters per minute. <clears throat> now let's look at this 1.25 feet is what we know per second. So we start out by writing a ratio of what we know. Now we have seconds on the bottom, so we can put seconds on the top and cancel that out. So we have 60 seconds <clears throat> equals one minute. So we're able to cancel out seconds and then one minute is over here, 25 point, uh, let's see. Oh, we're, that's the value that we're after. So we've got minutes in the final answer. Now we have to get rid of the feet. So we know we put the feet on the bottom and that cancels out with the feet on the top. And there is 12 inches in one foot, but we've got to get into meters. So we're, there's one inch per 25.4 millimeters. And there's one millimeter in 0 0.001 meters. So we're able to now do the math, 1.25 times 60 times 12 times 25.4 times 0 .001, and it gives us an answer of 22.86 meters per minute. Notice that we arrange the conversion so that the units cancel out on the top and the bottom, leaving just the units you are seeking. This is a very powerful technique for solving a lot of problems, not just math conversions. Now let's look at the internet browser method. Just go to your browser, type in convert 1.25 feet per second to meters per minute, and you'll get an answer immediately on your browser. Another method is to download a conversion calculator app for your phone. Then you can type in the variables that are required, like one mile equals how many kilometers, and you can select those values and it will give you the conversion. Type in your unit and you're ready to go. I would recommend a couple of apps that are uh, available for free. Now let's look at weights and volume conversion. So one metric ton equals 1,000 kilograms, and that equals 2,205 pounds. One pound equals 16 ounces. One cubic foot equals 28.32 liters, and that also equals 7.482 gallons. One cubic inch equals 16.387 cubic centimeters and one liter equals 0.264 gallons. These are some values that you might want to memorize or at least be familiar with, but they can be looked up in a table. So let's take an example. What is the kilogram weight of a block of steel that's two inches by four inches by six inches? We have to look up in a table to find the density of steel. And we find that it's 491 pounds per cubic foot. So that's one value that we're going to use. The first thing that we have to do is convert the dimensions of our block of steel into cubic inches. So we're going to say two inches times four inches times six inches. And that'll give us cubic inches. And then we have cubic inches on the top. We want to have cubic inches on the bottom which is 12 times 12 times 12 cubic inches equals one foot. So then we get, need to get rid of the cubic feet so we can take, um, cancel out feet with one cubic foot equals 491 pounds. That's the value from the table we looked up. 
So now we know how many pounds, but how many grams is it? So we, one pound is 454 grams. So now we have the grams where we can cancel out. 1,000 grams equals kilograms. And now we're down to what's left is only kilograms. And we can see that uh, if we do that calculation, 2 times 4 times 6 divided by 12 divided by 12 divided by 12 times 491 times 454 divided by 1,000 equals 6.192 kilograms. So it doesn't matter what order you do this math in. You just need to know if the number's on the bottom, you're going to divide. If the number's on the top, you're going to multiply. So that's an important point. Now temperature. Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times Celsius divided by 32. That's the way to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. And Celsius is the same thing as centigrade. So let's look at an example. What is 98 degrees Fahrenheit converted to Celsius? Note that in this case, there's two significant digits, 98 degrees. So our result should also be two significant digits. If we just plug into the formula, we have Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times C divided by 32. So we rearrange that formula to solve for C. Uh, so we'll, that is Fahrenheit minus 32 equals 1.8 times C. And then we divide, we move that 1.8 to the bottom. So F, divide both sides by 1.8, basically. So F minus 32 divided by 1.8 equals centigrade. So first we have to do what's in parentheses, so 98 minus 32. And then we divide by 1.8, and the answer is 37. Now let me show you. A good way you can memorize how to do this calculation almost in your head and get very close to the correct answer. So if you take 98 minus 32, you get 66, then divide it by 2 and add 10 percent. So 66 divided by 2 is 33, add 10 percent, which is adding 3.3, so 33.3 .3 is about 36. So you can get very close by subtracting 32 from Fahrenheit, dividing by 2, and adding 10 percent. Now let's look at pressure. Pressure is measured in bar, and that equals 14.5 psi. So one bar equals 14.5 pounds per square inch of pressure, and one megapascal equals 145 PSI, which also equals 10 bar. <clears throat> so those are some values that you can find in a table. So let's look at an, at an example. Let's say you have a cylinder that is four inches in diameter and has 100 megapascal of hydraulic pressure applied to it. What is the force in U.S. tons that it exerts? First calculate the area of the cylinder. And you might remember pi times d squared over 4, so the diameter is squared, and then divided by 4 and multiplied times pi. Pi is 3.14159. So here we have 3.14159 times the diameter, 4 times 4 squared, and then divide by 4 equals 12.57 square inches. And that is part of our answer, pounds per square inch. So we'll just divide by that when the time comes. So now we look at conversion factors, 100 megapascals. And there's one megapascal per 145 PSI. So we're able to cancel out megapascal and convert to PSI. So now we have 145 PSI. We'll divide that to get rid of the square inch. See we have pounds per square inch. So that canceled out the square inches. Now there's nothing on top because 
it's our cylinder. So you could say there's a one there, one cylinder. But the units is nothing. <clears throat> now we have 2,000 pounds. So that pounds cancels out the P and the PSI and leaves us with one ton. So there's 2,000 pounds per ton. So if we do that math, 100 equals 0.577 tons. An electrical ca calculation, one kilowatt equals 1.341 horsepower. Power equals watts equals volts times amps. And this is a formula that you might remember, need to remember uh, in electrical work. P equals VI, where P stands for power, V is volts, and I is amps. So let's take an example. A motor is a one quarter horsepower and running on 120 volts AC current. How many amps of current will be drawn to operate the motor at maximum? So we have one quarter horsepower, that's 0.25 horsepower. And there are 1.34 horsepower per kilowatt. So now we've been able to cancel out the horsepower. And there is one kilowatt for every 1,000 watts. And so we can cancel out kilowatts. And we do the math, 0.25 divided by 1.341 times 1,000 equals 186 watts, approximately. Now we rearrange the formula to solve for amps. So we have watts divided by volts equals amps. So 186 watts divided by 120 volts equals 1.55 amps. Now let's look at a machining example. So what is the speed and feed setting given that you are milling mild steel with a recommended surface speed of 100 feet per minute? The chip load is given from a table of 0 0.003 inches and a one quarter inch, no a three quarter inch diameter two flute cutter is going to be used. The machine has to be programmed in metric, so you need to enter speed in RPMs and feed as meters per minute. The rule of thumb for spindle speed is RPM equals SFM, that's the surface speed per minute, times four divided by the diameter. And the diameter we're talking about is the diameter of your cutting tool or the diameter of the workpiece on the lathe. So if we take 100, which was the SFM, times 4 and divide it by a 0.75 inch cutter, we get 530 RPMs. Now let's look at the formula. We have 530 rotations per minute. For every rotation, two teeth go by. So there's another uh, way of getting rid of the rotations. So now we have two teeth per minute and then we have 0 0.003 inches and that is the chip load. So now we can take and come up with how many inches per minute should we be moving our cutter past the metal. So 530 times 2 times 0 0.003 is 3.18 inches per minute. Now we're not done yet because we need to get to meters per minute. So we take 3.18 inches per minute and we convert inches to metric with our 25.4. So we have inches canceling out. And then we have, there are 1,000 millimeters in a, in a meter. So that cancels out millimeters and leaves us with meters. So we do the math, 3.18 times 25.4 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.081 meters per minute. Let's look at metric bolts and threads. Example, what is the close metric screw size? to a 1032 screw. You may not be familiar with screws, but they, uh, in the American system, 
there's a code system. So a 1032 describes a certain size bolt that has 32 threads per inch. So we start by knowing that we have 32 threads per inch. And then we convert inches to millimeters. And we can cancel out the inches. See how that started from the bottom and canceled to the top? And that works just as well. Now we have 32 threads per millimeter. So 32 divided by 25.4 equals 1.26 threads per millimeter. So we need to invert that in order to get the millimeters per thread, which is what's shown in the table here. So we take 1 divided by 1.26 and that gives us 0.79 millimeters per thread. You notice we just turned that upside down in order to make the conversion. Now we can look up 0.79 in this table and you can see that the M4.5 has a pitch of 0.75 millimeters which is close to 0.79 and an American drill size is 22 versus 21 for the 1032. So it's very close. Note though that close doesn't count because you can't mix metric bolts and standard bolts. You can't put one in the other's thread. Uh, you just have to make sure that you make the, the threads are made correctly for the bolts that you're going to use. So let's look at another common terminology in that bolt table. Common sizes are 832, 1024, quarter 20, and half 13. So you can look these up in a table and that allows you to pick the type of the size of drill for a tapped hole or a clearance hole. Let's talk about textiles. Textiles is very popular in North Carolina. Fixed weight system has a few standard measures, cotton count and metric. And large number, large numbers means that it's a finer yarn. So for cotton count, 840 yard hanks per one pound. And a hank is 840 yards. So if you had 840 yards of a fiber, it would weigh one pound if it was cotton. And that's got a unit that's called HE. Now there's also metric, which is pretty straightforward. For a thousand meter length of cotton fiber, there's one kilogram. And of course this depends on how thick that fiber of cotton is. So that's how you're describing the weight of the cotton fiber in these terms, either cotton count or the metric count. And the fixed length system is another way of looking at it. And that's, that is denier and tex. And denier is probably more common, but both are common. Uh, denier is how many grams there are per 9,000 meters of that fiber. In Texas, how many grams there are per 1,000 meters. So let's look at an example. What is the weight of 9,000 meters of a 2 ply 70 denier 34 filament nylon continuous filament yarn? So we have 9,000 meters. We have to convert that to grams. And there's two strands of fiber so normally the fiber, in this case, is described as 2 ply 70. So there's really 140 denier, but we'll, taste, we'll say 2 times 70 grams. Remember denier is grams per 9,000 meters. So we can put 9,000 on the bottom and we have 9,000 on top. So those cancel out totally. And the number of grams is 2 times 70 it's 140 grams. So that's pretty straightforward. Now a similar weight and length of cotton yarn would have a cotton count of. So we know that it's going to be 140 grams in 9,000 meters. 
So we say 140 grams, well, we're going to convert that to pounds. So 454.4 grams per pound. That's that ratio, grams per pound. Then we're doing 9,000 meters. And there's 0.9144 meters in a yard. So that cancels out the meters. And there are 840 yards hanks per pound. That's per our table up here, 840 yard hanks per one pound. So now we do the math, 140 divided by 454 times 9,000 divided by 0.914 divided by 840 gives us 3.61 HE, which is the cotton count of a yarn that would be similar in weight to the two ply 70 denier 34 filament nylon yarn. And an injection molding. If the injection barrel diameter is 60 millimeters and the shot to be produced in polypropylene with a specific gravity of 0.9 weighs 0.5 pounds, what should the shot size setting be including 0.25 inches of cushion? And we have to know from a table that the specific gravity of, in this case, polypropylene is 0.9 grams per cubic centimeter. So we just put down what we know. We know that we have a 0.5 pounds. So 0.5 pounds, one pound converted to grams, so we can get rid of the pounds and that's 454.4 grams. There's 0.9 uh, grams per cubic centimeter. That's also from the table for the density of polypropylene. And the area of the barrel in the machine in centimeters. Well, we're using pi times d squared over four. So d in this case is six centimeters. So if you do that math out, 3.14 times six times six divided by four, it's 28.27. And that would be the area of the barrel in centimeters, square centimeters. So we've got to convert the centimeters to inches. So we use 2.54 centimeters per inch. And we do the math, 0 0.5 times 454 divided by 0.9 divided by 28.27 times 2.54 equals 3.5 inches. But we also have to have the cushion of 0.25 inches, so it's 3.75 inches is our answer. Note that the melt density may be less than the specific gravity by 10 or 20 percent, so this shot size setting might need to be increased by 10 to 15 percent. That's because when the plastic is hot, it's not as dense. Let's look at an injection molding example. If an injection barrel ID is 60 millimeters in diameter, and the shot to be produced in polypropylene with a specific gravity of 0 0.9 weighs 0 0.5 pounds. So we're trying to make a plastic part that weighs a half a pound. What should the shot size setting be, including 0.25 inches of cushion? So how far back do you have to move the screw in order to uh, inject 0.5 pounds? Okay, so we know 0.5 pounds. We're going to convert pounds to grams with 454.4. That leaves us with uh, canceling out the pounds. Now there are 454 grams. Well, we've got this value of 0.9 specific gravity. Well, specific gravity is really grams per cubic centimeter. So we know 0.9 grams per one cubic centimeter. So that allows us to cancel out the grams. Now the area of the barrel in centimeters, actually it'll be square centimeters, is pi times d squared over 4. So we take 3.14 times 6 centimeters times 6 centimeters and divide by 4 
and we get 28.27 square centimeters. Okay, so this is a little tricky because we have square centimeters. So you just think you've got two centimeters on the bottom and you've got three on the top because we've got cubic centimeters up here. So when we cancel out the square centimeters, we still have one centimeter left. So we've got to get rid of that. So we convert 2.54 centimeters to inches and that cancels out the last of the three cubic centimeters. And now we can do the math, 0 0.5 times 454 divided by 0 0.9 divided by 28.27 divided by 2.54 equals 3.5 inches. But then we need to maintain a 0.25 inch cushion. So we add 0.25 inches and we get 3.75 inches as our answer. So you also need to note that the melt density may be less than the specific gravity by 10 to 20%. So this shot size setting could be increased by 10 to 15%. That's because when plastic is hot, it's not as dense. Okay, we're moving on now to the next topic. So uh, this is the end of this session. If you have any questions, let me know. You can put in a comment below or just contact me directly.